I've lived in Chelyabinsk all my life. Uh, I was five when I was brought to Chelyabinsk, now I'm 65. And uh, I um, went r around uh, our region many times, uh, went mountain and uh, visited lakes. And uh, till 1992, I had never even known that there was any kind of disaster of this kind, that the river that I crossed was heavily contaminated, that some lakes where people swam were heavily contaminated, and so on and so forth. Uh, due to the um, uh, due to the work of our newly um, elected. Uh, members of the local parliament, Natalia Mironova and some others, uh, who made uh, the industry and uh, the government uh, reveal uh, the real extent of uh, the radiation and what happened. I first was invited to interpret for uh, the first our city was a closed city. No foreigners were allowed in because of a lot of military production was going on in the city and because 100 kilometers away was this nuclear facility which we never knew about. And uh, so uh, the uh, the first uh, international... We, our city was opened in February and the first international um, conference was held in May and I was invited there. And uh, we went uh, with uh, the participants of this conference uh, to the village of Moslumova, which was left on the banks of this con heavily contaminated river, just as uh, guinea pigs to be watched by the industry. What about the small doses of radiation? Uh, what are the, the effect? When I first spoke and helped uh, the foreign participants uh, to have to take interview from these people i saw so much suffering I, I i'm a psychologist i understood that the people were so much depressed and uh, i saw people who, uh, children already who had birth uh, defects and uh, the i became so mad that i wanted all nuclear industry to shut down immediately because even we can you imagine they've been living there uh, since the first releases began in 1948 no that was war time after war uh, the the effort was made just this to this cold war no somehow uh, people suffered but then they were just left there and special medical institute was organized in Chelyabinsk. And doctors went there and measured their health and checked their health and they were never told that there was radiation inside. Never. Can you imagine it? And it's, I, I, I'm sure that is, that's why I became just a volunteer in uh, Movement for Nuclear Safety. And when I came there uh, to the United States of America, I understood that everything is the same here. I went to Hanford, I spoke to downbinders, I met uh, the victims of tests in the islands, I met the victims of, from the military staff, I met people who were British uh, soldiers who were said to sit on the beach and to watch uh, the explosion. And I met with uh, Hibakushi in Japan uh, who were uh, also not treated very well by the government and they also were uh, to go through a lot of psychological problems because of they considered themselves to be ill and you, you know that people were afraid even because they were irradiated and uh, so I think my radical idea was and I think it still holds uh, there is so much contamination on the earth already and if we fence out all the contaminated areas and never allow people 
and they shouldn't be allowed to live on the contaminated land. They shouldn't be allowed to live on it. They shouldn't take precautions to grow this and to grow that, uh, to pr process milk so as not to get irradiated. It's sheer madness. And this plutonium is a handmade material. What for? What are we going to do with all this? And if we fenced it out, everybody will see how little of the land is still safe. And maybe now it is not safe because of this irradiation going all over the world. From Chernobyl so many countries suffered and they still, um, uh, the government still pay subsidies uh, to people in Scotland so that they can't use the sheep they are growing there. It's, it's just madness. I, I hope the world is not mad enough to allow this to go on. I think that we should all take just action. We should go. To. By the way, the problem is that the future generations which will have to handle all this stuff may be not ready to do it, may forget how to do it. Anything can happen. And may be too ill to handle it. That's why I am here. Can you talk about the the whole system of closed cities and secret cities? And it seems, uh, on the on the face of it, and uh, I know it's been done here too. Uh, yeah, cities which are not known by the residents to be secret cities, and also are not known by the rest of the population to yes, exist. Uh, this is Natasha. Natasha lives in a closed city. She can tell you more, because uh, what I know that uh, the, there is why they keep this closed. In the United States, uh, they very quickly drop the idea of having closed cities. They allow the, the industrial workers who work in the industry to live nearby cities. And we have many cities here in the United States where people live and go to work in the plants. And even for nuclear power plants, all the cities, Pripyat and Chernobyl, were not closed cities. You see, uh, that was uh, done for military production. Uh, these cities which are left closed in Russia are originated from military weapon production. And uh, I'm sure that uh, nuclear power is uh, the, t the continuation of this weaponry uh, production. And the only, um, yeah, the, 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 the whole idea of go of clean nuclear energy is only because uh, without this process uh, the um, uh, production of weapons will stop. So we don't have only unclean uh, this unclean um, uh, electricity which is not valid from the point of economics because nobody started decommissioning of the plants. And why they do, why, what about this continuation of their life uh, span? Because when they start decommissioning, they would have to, to put so much money into it that the, everybody will understand that the nuclear um, electricity uh, is uh, just not affordable from the point of view of money and the resources and they would never make Hanford side, our um, just uh, footprint from the accidents, they would never make it clean. Never. That's, but that's why they keep it closed, because they want to... First of all, it, there is no need now, but uh, first of all, as Natasha said, that, that was her words, that they are paid for secrecy, and they want to go on being paid that they are guarding the secrets. So that, that's, that's all there is to it. So would you say that uh, democracy and nuclear weapons and power are incompatible? I can say that uh, nuclear power 
is incompatible uh, to any uh, just uh, way of organizing our life, whether it is a democracy like in the United States, whether it is a kind of a police state, which is Russia now corrupted government, whether it is India, which is uh, neither here nor there yet, where, whether it is Pakistan, uh, it is just incompatible. It can't coexist with human life. That's my opinion. And uh, we were talking, I would love to, as a psychologist, ask you about it, the nuclear powers um, violence aspect. Yeah, that um, I mean that uh, what I meant to say is uh, that um, uh, nuclear power uh, and the uh, nuclear industry and the government are very good manipulators of people's uh, mind and behavior and due to uh, made cl just uh, media it's uh, even more and more yeah everywhere and uh, then um, those who speak against are not allowed to, to go on national uh, video channels or anywhere and so the psychological effect you see that people who live in contaminated areas or live near these sites which is are still producing their discharging uh, nuclear radiation into there they uh, they feel that this is deadly uh, just influence but they can't go anywhere <laughs> their, their life is there uh, their ancestors were there. It's uh, a lot to do with ingenious people who are traditional uh, just uh, societies. And uh, they are not ready to go away. But at the same time, uh, they suffer from living there. And this is uh, just the ongoing stress. And it's impossible to just to cope with this stress. What I saw that it's impossible to go. It's beyond the human ability to cope with the stress. They have to shut down half of their brain in order to live. You see, just shut down it and keep it closed, and then they can go on living there. <laughs>